I want to preface before we go on in this conversation that everything we're saying is out of love and admiration and fandom for Tiger Woods. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. A lot going on right now. A lot of hot action. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama for the first time in my life. My uh, my long 37-year life. Never been to Birmingham. Just finished up the Barstool Classic. Uh, Greystone Country Club it was at. I got to say, just a delightful place being here in Alabama. I don't know much about Alabama. The only other time I was ever in the state of Alabama, to my recollection, it was the Saturday uh, in the fall of 2018. And Mr. Tiger Woods was playing in the tour championship. And like we had a real motley crew of Barstool air quotes talent on air quotes that were here for this. Like I can't remember which company we were doing it for, but we were traveling around going to basically Saturday tailgates for football games. And we came to Tuscaloosa and we did this tailgate at Bama. And then Tiger Woods started out red hot on the front nine on Saturday to like vault into the lead. And I said, I cannot go to that football game. I'm going to my hotel room. And I sat inside of like a Motel 8 or a hotel or a Holiday Inn or whatever we were staying at. And I watched that whole round and tweeted that whole round because Tiger went crazy, built himself like a three-shot lead. And then obviously he went on to win for the first time in like five years or however long it was in 2018 at the tour championship when everybody surrounded him and Rory McIlroy like he was winning the British Open. So that was the only other time I've ever been in Alabama. Uh, fantastic day today. We got myself and Dan Rappaport. Trent Ryan uh, is actually at the LSU-Iowa women's NCAA basketball game right now with Dave Portnoy. He got invited to that, so he had to go. I'm watching that. I got a good amount of coin on DraftKings Sportsbook responsibly, hashtag DK Partner on this game so i think there's um the bush man so i'm watching this intently but you got myself and dan rapport there's a ton of golf stuff to talk about nelly Corda's on like an all-time run scotty scheffler's on like an all-time run the jaegermeister was one of my favorite guys to bet on when me and kirk used to do our show tiger woods was at augusta so we got a lot to talk about dan we have a, a ton to talk about i was not on the show last week as you guys were in stream song so i'm coming back with a bang a big time bang um how long were you doing like when did you start only doing golf stuff for barstool like how long were you still going to like sec football stuff yeah good question i would say the um covid really separated things because that's up until when you that got point hot. i was i just yeah i mean covid terrible <laughs> thing it's a it's Not a bad horrible thing that happened <laughs> to humanity but if you want to look in a strict silo of how it affected riggs barstool's career it's a positive i mean it just it led to the Pinehurst experience. And it just kind of created this natural separation from the office because up until that point, I was hosting radio every day. And I know Dan's having a little bit of internet issues. He's probably going to pop right back in. Um, but I was hosting, I could just talk to Alex Bush. I was hosting Barstool Radio every day. And so for four years leading up to COVID, I was hosting uh, the Cousins Show, which was myself, uh, Dave's father, uh, Michael Portnoy Esquire. And Cousin Murray, who is uh, Dave's dad's very, very, very good friend. And so I was hosting that radio show every morning from 9 to like 10. And then I was also hosting the kind of rush hour show that was Dave and Tommy Smokes and myself with Frankie producing. And then eventually I kind of said, I'm not going to do the Cousins anymore. Trent came in and did the Cousins a lot. And then I was hosting kind of Barstool Radio. So I had to be anchored to the office still to host Barstool Radio from four to six. But as Dave likes to say, it's kind of just throwing the glove on the field at that point. And I mean, we were kind of, it was foreplay, golf. That was our moneymaker. We were trying to build this thing out. We started the Barstool Classic in 2019. Tiger won the Masters in 2019. So like golf was bumping. There was a lot of shit for us to cover and do or whatever. And then snap of the fingers, COVID hits. We go from literally like the week before the world shut down we were still kind of making fun of people in the office that were saying that this COVID was going to be a big deal, like legitimately still making fun of them. And then I remember that following Monday was the day that kind of everywhere sort of shut down because the weekend, that weekend prior was when like spring breakers were caught on the beaches of Florida and there were that, all those that like was like aerial the first shots. story that I broke as a journalist was I was having dinner with, uh, with Fitz when it got canceled. 
when the players championship the players got championship. canceled. I remember I tweeted like the players championship has been canceled and I, you know, I've been in love with it ever since. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, honestly, that, that changed so fast because everyone got like that Sunday before we shut down. It was like March 14th or something, whatever it was that Sunday, like everyone got shamed for their behavior on Saturday and I remember that Saturday was also a really nice day in New York. It was like 60-something degrees in New York. So everyone was out and about. We were at restaurants, and we were all supposed to not be. There was like this, gen- like Italy had shut down, and they had, they, had, they had canceled March Madness, but people were still out and about. And then that like Sunday, Monday, the whole world, we kind of shamed, or the whole country, like we started all shamed ourselves. And then that day was when Dave announced on radio that Monday, like radio was henceforth canceled. And the New York office is closed. People are not allowed to go into the office. That was like the last day I was in the office. So whatever day that was, like March, mid-March 2020. March 12th. I think it was March 12th was when the players got canceled. So that would have been that Friday or Thursday. So yeah, like three or four days later is when it, everything changed. And then I made a quick game time decision and said, I'm not going to be stuck in my 400 square foot Manhattan apartment. I'm getting the hell out of here and went down to Pinehurst and obviously... We know how that ended. And so, uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, I would say like a year prior to that, maybe. So early 2019 or so, we kind of started to go all in on the golf. And I want to say, was the PGA championship at Beth Page was 2019. Is that right? When Brooks won? Yeah, Brooks. Mm -hmm. That was the first time that we convinced Dave that our whole operation should go to a tournament. Like we had never done that before. Yeah. We had, had little spurts and we did, and we fucking killed it. Like Bryson was giving Frankie a wedge lesson on the driving range at a major championship. Like legit. I saw that. I remember that. That was going on. Um, we had when Tiger gave his golf ball to Frankie and then Frankie had to give it up and then had to end up giving the ball back to some little kid because he lost the Sharpie that the kid was supposed to like have to sign everything with. We got all kinds of good stuff with kids. We had a video that went pretty viral of us like uh, judging everybody's entrance into the PGA Championship on like Tuesday. Um, we had like fist bumps with Brooks like while he was leading the golf tournament on Saturday. So we just kind of were everywhere and it went really well. And that was sort of, I think, around that time when it was kind of like, oh, this is a real like full-time operation that we have here so it's it's covid really made the break but i would say like mid early 2019 we launched the barstool classic we kind of started going to majors and it kind of started to become more of a a real thing and look at look at you now you know you got correspondents all over the country you know people in different places (laughs) covering different things uh no it's it's a very exciting time we it's the masters is next week you know we say it every every year that it's snuck up on us guess what it snuck up on us again Did you know that you can get tickets to, and I live in Phoenix, so I'm looking at st- uh, stuff that's available in Phoenix, the NCAA Men's Final Four this weekend, State Farm Stadium, Saturday, April 6th, thought this would be higher, $360. You can also get Cavaliers at Suns game, Wednesday, April 3rd, which is tomorrow night, $42. Golden Knights at Phoenix Coyotes, Friday night, April 5th. 7 p.m., $151. We're talking about game time, baby. Game time. They are the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Baseball's back. You shouldn't have to worry about when buying tickets to your next game. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, all the music, all the comedy, all the theater events near you. We love going to events, don't we, Dan? We love going to events. I'm trying to go to a bunch of Dodger games this year. I feel like Dodger games are maybe a, a little bit slept on in Los Angeles of just how fun they are. Um, you know, you, you, you get a hot dog, you get a beer. Think about when you were a kid going to a game, that was like the ultimate, that was, that was the number one activity. Now you can open up an app, get cheap tickets and go. And it's so easy. And I think maybe we take it for granted a little bit, go to baseball games this year, support your local team. It's, it's, you never, you never regret it. I'm looking right now, Dan, on the game time app and tonight. So people already missed this, but 7, 10 PM local time, the giants at the Dodgers, 28 bucks. You can get that on game time. $28. You can go out there and That'll just sit. have That'll sit. That'll such work. a good time. 
And you're right. As a kid, it, it's the it's the coolest thing on earth. You talk about it all month long. As an adult, it's equally just as cool. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code four F O R E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Use that code four. And again, I'm on the app right now. It's so easy. You type in a city, you look at music, you look at sports, shows, whatever you want, and it just lists exactly what's available, the prices. Nobody's gonna be able to beat those. It's the best. Use that code for download the game time app today. Mm, you're gonna have to drop out and come right back. <laughs> so anybody listening, this is the Frankie does this too. And I've done I've been uh guilty of doing this but we talk about these little sure mics that we have where if you even touch these sensitive little bastards that cord comes out and when the cord comes out this riverside technology that we use behind the scenes just simply does not know how to compute that the cord has come out and allow you to reinsert it notice that it's reconnected and just live your life so you have to drop out and come back in which is what dan rapport's doing right now just a, a quick a quick aside here a quick aside here have you seen three body problem on netflix no, I have not. Okay. It's a show about technology. It's a joke. It's a joke that they haven't fixed that part of this app. That when that when the sound goes off, you're just you're just done for. There's just nothing you can do. They can't figure out a way to put you on a pause. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Like it's yeah. insane. Bush man. Dude, this thing this Riverside is actually quite bitchy in that it requires a lot of maintenance. You have to keep the fucking app open, right? You can't you can't just close your browser and celebrate the weekend. You have to hit the red button. Riverside is it's kind of a hot chick, right? Like the quality's great. It comes out yeah. to high maintenance, like very high maintenance. You gotta have you gotta have all your attention at all times. It really gets bitchy when you mess anything up to the smallest degree. So River Riverside is yeah, kind of a Zoom annoying. Zoom is like girl next door, you know? Zoom is like wholesome girl next door, like reliable. Listen, it might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but she's there. Okay. And there's value in that. And Riverside, like you said, it's just the reward might be big, but the cost will be extensive. So, Dan, you're at Live. You flew down for Live Golf Miami. Um, I noticed yeah. you got a microwave in your room. Is Live Golf Miami like taking yeah. our, c- care of you this week, or how does that work? No, no. Uh, Barstool is taking Damn. care of me this week. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not accepting paid, you know, shit. That would be That's nice fair. if that was the case. But um, no, we're coming down here. We're gonna we're shooting a uh, side gig with Joaquin Neiman tomorrow. Which Big is very one. exciting. He's a, a guy that I feel like a lot of people don't really maybe know as well, um, but has, has been, you know, by most metrics, a top 10, top 15 player this year. He's won twice on live. He got the special invite into the Masters. Uh, we did Minwoo Lee last week, last week on Friday. So we're on a bit of a hot stretch right here. How was Minwoo Lee? Dude, he, Jared and I were actually texting about it today. He hit this tee shot. So it was, it was blowing like 30 miles an hour and uh, in Vegas. So it's like a dry, you know, you know, the desert, like when it's cold and windy, like it's nasty outside. Yeah. And it was like blowing 30 miles an hour. And he kept hitting this, this like two yard low cut. And he just kept doing it no matter what the wind was. He just kept hitting it. And it was unbelievable. Jared and I were texting today. We were like on the fourth hole. He had a, he had to drive like 400 something yards. It was downhill, downwind. He hits it. He turns around. He's like, oh my God, I hit that so flush. Jared was like shaking his head in disbelief for a good minute. And like he texted me today, but I still think about Minwoo's tee shot on four. He was wow. he was so like physically impressive, like you know. And I've done this series, and I've seen a lot of good golf. He he obviously isn't you know the number one player in the world, but from a pure talent perspective, like the shots that he's able to pull off, it's very impressive. Yeah, he's kind of made for that world too, right? He's been good with social media his whole like life. Basically, grew up with that. He's at that age where he's embraced it and all that. So I, I imagine he knew how to play it up for the camera a little bit too out there. Totally. I mean, he, he, yes, he was a pro. You didn't have to tell him to do things twice. He like had some ideas. It's, it's just, it's different dealing with pros in that generation, which is like Gen Z, right? Which is like him and Sahith and, um, who there was some one other, Akshay are the three that come to mind who are like, this, this is part of like, you know, they, they get it. It's part of what they do as a professional golfer. They think of it as part of being a professional golfer because it's like, you know, you can't really separate the two now as much as you could. You still can, but those guys think of themselves as they want to do this. So it's a very interesting, you know, they, it doesn't feel like they're doing you a favor because they're, they feel like they're getting stuff out of it. 
So for you now, as a guy who's, uh, you know, you've flown in, it's Monday, you're at Live Golf Miami, you're filming with Joaquim, I think, tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. What's uh, like? You, what's the rest of your plan? I know you've been to a live event before. Are you? Yeah. Do you walk? Do you? Are you going to go as just a normal journalist? You're going to walk around. Do you got to keep your head on the swivel? Or are you like checking the? You know how how's it how does it feel at these? I, we I mean we've said some shit on this show. I think I think and I hope that we are past the point in professional golf of keeping receipts. Or, you know, trying to shove people's noses and things that they said in the past. Um, you know, we're, we're preaching a message of unity. I, I think there are, I think, you know, what was said was said. And I think that everyone kind of wants to get, do away with the, the toxicity. So I'm hoping that it will be just like a normal situation. But no, I mean, most of my job, as I've told you before, is just talking to people. Like, talking to people, see and be seen like make relationships because that's how we get guests that's how i develop stuff where i learn things that's how that's how you be like actually connected in the game is to have relationships with people so that's most of it honestly and then i'll make a video or you know whatever it is but it's a lot of the work is like long-term background stuff that maybe doesn't pay off right then but oh you know i had a conversation with this guy so now i can text him and he'll come on the podcast or he'll do this video or whatever it is i like it how long you stay there I think I'm going to stay until Thursday is the plan. I got, I'm going back home and then I'm going to Augusta for the whole week next week. So like I got to uh, put yeah. some time in at home. I'm, I'm already in the doghouse cause I got this chipping green and it's way bigger than we talked about. And huge. Just, that man, thing. You told happened. me, you basically Dude. told me you're getting like one of those perfect practice putting mat size things. And I look back there. It's like you built your own resort in your backyard. Dude, it's, um, I told Emma that it was that it was going to be like 25% of the yard and it's probably 60. <laughs> uh, so, so you went with and it was at the point where there was like two guys who or three guys who have who have sculpted this beautiful green, right? Like out of dirt. And they come and show you and it's just way bigger than we talked about. And I kind of look at Emma and she's like looking at me like what what do you want what do you want me to tell these guys? You want me to be the one who's like nope, it's got to be half the size so it just kind of happened i will say and i know you know you're using the guys that i use the celebrity greens guys they're absolutely awesome. inc- that guy incredible. weston is such a beauty weston uh gina i believe is his wife's name they're like two of the best people ever they live actually out in arizona and so i've gotten drinks with them before they built the green uh that i had uh built at the house in pinehurst and it was a say, it was kind of what you said when they first sent me a mock up I looked at it and was like that's preposterous like that is going to be almost so big and outrageous that it's like an eyesore even though it's a beautiful green and the whole deal and then they came and they started kicking like you know they kick uh like medicine balls around and like soccer balls around and that's how they kind of like see how the break's going to be they like kick them around on the concrete before they actually lay down the actual sod and the whole thing and I'm like, bigger, like go big, like this is it. Like we got to go bigger. And next thing you know, dude, they finish this thing off and whatever you spend, it's it. You should have, you, you would spend double or triple. The thing is so unbelievably fun. Like if you're like us and you're just a golf dork dweeb, you're obsessed. You got the bug, the whole thing, just going out there. Like you even real, it's almost like when you, when you're hungry, when you're not even hungry, sorry, when you're not even hungry and you realize that you've made three trips to the fridge in the last hour for no reason, you weren't thinking about it, you didn't need to, you weren't hungry, you weren't starving, it's the same way when you have one of those greens. You just, you look up and next thing you know, you've just been shipping for five minutes and you're like, I didn't even mean to, I didn't need to, I'm not trying to work on anything, I'm just out here fucking chipping, man. I've been out there every... <clears throat> I've been out there every single day uh, since I got it. Yeah. And it's like, I'll just put in a podcast and just chip. It, oh. It's, you know, it's, you're right. It's, it's. That guy fights technology more than anybody I've ever met. And I, you know, he's gone again. He did it again. He's gone again. And I, I, you know, I know we were against, we were a little anti Riverside there for a little bit. But on some level, it's like, you got to just not get defeated by technology so frequently, Dan. Uh, it's, a, it's been a rough uh, stretch. Do you have stretch, a stand? I mean, two year period. Do you, have a, do you have a stand? No, no. If I told you what happened to my stand, you wouldn't believe me. Uh, it's just stuck on the okay. it's stuck on the thing at home. But um, no, it's yeah, okay. it's, it's extremely worth it from from an hours of enjoyment perspective. 
you're going to, whatever you, you're doing the divisor, you need to make it bigger because you're going to spend so much more time. And then when people come over, it's the first thing they want to do. And it doesn't make the yard look it's smaller true. because it's open grass at the end of the day, or it's turf, whatever it is. It's like, it's not like a big structure that, that blocks everything. And if you have a party, you can still have people walk on it. And it's a big net add to a party. That's a great point. It is the first thing that people do. I will say that if you're listening to this right now um, and you want to hit up Celebrity Greens, tell them Riggs sent you because I do get a kickback. Or, I or get tell a, them that Dan sent you also because no, just no, tell them that. I, I get a legitimate kickback. So tell them Riggs sent you from Barstool Sports. Tell Weston, tell Gina, tell them Riggs sent you, and I get a nice kickback, and it's fun when you get kickbacks. But they are the best. The green reacts just like a real green. They go out and sand it. I legitimately dude like once a quarter they just come out and sand and like roll the green it's fucking hilarious and it's just a turf so it is game changing to have one I'm, I'm glad you got yours put in and i'm surprised you were even able to do the podcast i figured you'd just be chipping all the time uh so you do need to put some time in at home this weekend i understand god you're gonna go la miami miami la la well to i was vegas Atlanta? too i was vi- I was oh, Vegas. Vegas too. I was Vegas Fuck. and then back and then Miami and then back and then Atlanta Masters week. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's golf season, baby. I'm young. I don't have kids. What the fuck else am I going to do? I kind of think that all the time too. It's like this is the time to do it. The Greens at Augusta will soon host golf's greatest players. And DraftKings is bringing you closer to the action with a major offer to celebrate the tournament. This week, all customers can deposit $10 or more and receive a ticket to DraftKings Millie Maker Contest for a shot at the $1 million top prize. Listen to that again. This week, all customers can deposit $10 or more and you will receive a ticket to DraftKings Millie Maker Contest for a shot at the $1 million top prize. Would you like $1 million, Dan Rapp? I would love one million dollars. I also I since DraftKings is you know Barstool's back with DraftKings. This app, mm-hmm. it's like switching from the PGA Tour app to the app for the first major of the year, where it's just like this is this. So this is how this is supposed to work. It is perfect. It's the best app in sports to bet on. Um, fully converted over, and it's it's making my. I've probably saved like seven or eight seconds every time I make a bet, which those things add up. It is a fantastic app. You're right. They got everything there so convenient. It's so quick. It's nice to look at. I like the colors. I like like black and green. I just think that's such a good color combination. Um, playing in this uh, Millie Maker is easy. Assemble a team of golfers while staying under the salary cap. Then sit back as your players score points. Download the DraftKings app and use code 4 to play free for a shot at the $1 million top prize. Only on DraftKings with code 4. Again, use the code 4 to play free for a shot at the $1 million top prize. DraftKings with the code 4. The crown is yours. Uh, I'm also going to be in Austin. I'm going to be in Austin from tomorrow afternoon, today when people are listening, until Friday night. And I want everyone to know that I'm trying to play Austin Country Club on Wednesday. So if people are out there listening and somebody's got a connection, Austin Country Club, I'm a I'm a um, quirky golf kind of guy. I know that everybody that played in the match play there for those however many years they had always said this wouldn't be a great stroke play course, kind of a wacky course, but for match play, it's amazing. It's got that hole that goes down by the uh, the lake there or the river there that's got the bridge, the whole deal. I would love to play Austin Country Club. I'm just going to be hanging around. I got my club. So if anybody's trying to have a game on Wednesday afternoon, your boy might be trying to play a little bit of golf at Austin Country Club. So that's twice now I'm asking for a little bit of kickbacks. That's fine. Um, Let's talk about a little bit of golf. First, let's talk about our spring line. We got some uh, people are probably noticing hat that I've got on. There's a crew deck I was wearing out there today. There's another handful of items. It's go time, baby. People are playing golf in New York, in the tri-state area, all around this great country. Uh, because it is now springtime. Spring has sprung better weather, the whole deal. Stored at barcelsports.com. You're going to see a bunch of the stuff that we're putting out there, but really cool hats, crew necks, tea, all kinds of good stuff. So go check out on our website, on social accounts, all that. The Barcel Golf Four Play Spring Line is out now. So please go check that out. Get yourself geared up. Uh, we're rooting for that. Okay. Um, Masters coming up next week. I want to get into that. I cannot believe that later this week we're going to see the Anwa. 
on Saturday, I believe it is. We're going to literally see the women play in Augusta National Sunday. We're going to see Bubba out there. Well, he's at the live golf thing, but we're going to see the former Masters winners out there in like their green jackets while the drive chip and putts going on. We're going to see the whole thing that's coming up this weekend. So I want to get into that. First, we got to talk about and we got to start with Nellie Corda. Nellie Corda is on an iconic run right now. She has won three consecutive starts on the LPGA Tour. She is the first player over there on that tour to do that since 2016. I believe she's the first American to do that since 1980, I think I saw. Yeah, Nancy. A, they said Nancy Lopez was the name, which was a stunning name to hear. Oh, my God. Uh, she's got one of the sweetest swings. Like She's got what I would say like the Grant Horvat version of swings, except she's the number <laughs> one player in the world on the LPGA tour, right? Like you don't look at John Rahm's swing or Scotty's swing. People don't necessarily look at it like they've got, they're the best players in the world. They've got insane golf swings, but from an aesthetic standpoint, people comment all the time on certain swings out there. Like uh, her swing, not only is she the number one player in the world, her swing is so silky smooth. It looks so simple yet so perfect. It's got incredible rhythm, yet power. She rips the ball. It looks like nothing could ever go wrong every time she plays in that PNC. And the week or two before, where they've now started to do a little joint co-ed uh, event, all the players that are up there on the stand that get asked about her go, holy shit, the way that that girl hits the ball, it, it's a testament to how good all the girls are on the LPGA Tour because I don't understand how she doesn't win every week. Well, now she's winning every week. She's won three tournaments in a row. I believe she shot a 65 yesterday. Uh, she's on an iconic run in the history of of golf. Yeah, and I, you know, I think she's she's got a, a real chance to make this year her year. She's off to an incredible start. And, you know, she, it's not like she hasn't accomplished a lot already, right? She's already a major champion. But, like, she hasn't gone on a run to put some distance between herself and number two. And, you know, that's she needs to do that. And if she can do that, which it looks like she can, she won her last three events, like this could be a year where she blossoms into like the, the full-blown transformational superstar that I think everyone's always hoped that she can be. Um, yeah, and it's you're right. It's rare. It's rare to get the double. I was trying to think of like the best players of all time. I guess Ben Hogan is the only one where it's like, oh, his swing is something. Jack Nicklaus's swing was kind of unique. Arnold Palmer's swing kind of unique. So it's you're right. She it's not often that the Adam Scott is also like Tiger Woods in terms of of ability. But yeah, yeah, it's it's cool that there, there's a clear number one in both the men's and the women's game right now. Um, and they're both American, which I think is you know to take a moment to sort of acknowledge that. That's nice. And I would say for the women's game, I feel like for the last ten or fifteen years, there has been a a, a strong for American fans of the golf game a desire to have one of our American girls step up and really be the girl, right? Because, we're yeah, we're all golf nuts. And on the men's side, you know, the men's game, even though we've talked a lot that about was never it an over issue. the last... That was never an issue finding an alpha in the men's game. It's just never been exactly an issue. There's plenty of that. Everybody understands it. And I think that as a American golf fan base, we were craving someone that we can relate to that's one of our girls she's incredibly marketable right like she's got nike she's got tailor made um she's good on social media her and her sister have a great thing going they're both incredibly marketable her swing her looks everything about her is just like a superstar type quality and she's been close she's a major champion she's gotten the number one in the world before but for her to separate herself at this point i saw it was starting to get a lot of steam on social media over the last 24 hours, every golf site that I went to, she was kind of the cover picture of like, oh, shit, we got some historical things happening here. It's so awesome to see. And I think she truly has the ability more so than anyone I can think of over the last decade or so to bring the women's game back to kind of the forefront of a lot of people's minds, not just golf fans, but sports fans. If you have this incredibly marketable, insanely talented girl on the women's side who's American, you're going to be able to attract a lot of the American fan base. We are patriotic. That's kind of how we roll over here. You get that American flag up there next to a name of someone that everybody can relate to, that everybody likes, who's, uh, you know, she's got the great clip that I remember of her like going a year or so ago, not even that long ago, and like like nervously getting a selfie with like Tiger Woods and getting a picture with Tiger Woods. And you're like, 
that is so fucking awesome. And now she is this dominant, dominant figure in the women's game. It got me hyped up yesterday when I saw that she was coming back. She was playing well. It was shit weather in Arizona. She had her maroon like pants on, even in the rain and the dicey weather. She was ripping good shots and gets it done under pressure. So Nellie Cord is incredibly impressive. I don't think it can be understated how difficult that is to win three consecutive starts in a row. Like that is, you're playing against a hundred some odd people every single time. Anything can go wrong. You can have one bad day. Someone else could just get red hot with a putter. To win three consecutive is outrageous. And I really do hope that she goes on a run. I, I, I agree with you that like she can make this year her year. But if she racks up a couple majors, and she really gets the game cooking. I think she could be. She, I think she could really help kind of transcend the women's game back to like when I first started getting into golf in you know oh three oh four oh five type era with Annika Lerner, and some Chilla, of the and Lerner, Lerner, Kari like, Webb, dude. That like to me, and maybe it was just because I was in the honeymoon phase of falling in love with golf. But that was like such a honeymoon phase of women's golf where it was like. I was just excited to watch the women's game a lot of the time because there were all these fucking stars that had some some fire that were going after it. Uh, I just think that like she's got she's given me some serious juice in the women's game that that I don't feel like we felt consistently in a while, and it it got me kind of hyped up. Yeah, I mean their first major of the year I think is the week after Augusta, the Chevron. So that's going to be there's going to be a lot. It's like appointment television. It's like we're sitting here and we're all watching the. Uh, the women's basketball game because Caitlin Clark is a massive star. There's, you know, it's, it's not that complicated of a formula. No, it's not. And I think, again, I think she kind of has that capability. So it got me fired up. I love that. She's a tailor made athlete. Of course she is. And uh, Scotty too. I forgot to say that they're both number ones. They're both Americans and they're both tailor made people. Somebody, I think Dr. Brett McCabe made a great point today. He said, he said, if you, if you removed Tiger Woods and you removed Annika, are we looking at two of the top like generational golf talents on both sides that are currently number one at the same time in a in something that's unprecedented? And I was like, that's a very interesting because Scotty, I feel like, and I don't know if the numbers back this up, but I think he was like, if he had won yesterday, I think he would have had the largest separation between number one ranked player and number two ranked player in the world since Tiger in 2009 or something like that. And then at the same time, you've got Nellie Corda, who's like won three in a row. It's the first time since 2016. It's the first time since Americans done it since 1980 that you could have two concurrent, simultaneous number ones that are like generational number ones, potentially. Yeah. It's an interesting, um, you know, kind of leads you to think of the like question of is it better for the sport? if there is a dominant figure or if there isn't a dominant figure and it's a bunch of people. And I feel like it depends on who the dominant winner is. Like, obviously at this point in time, it would be better for the women's game if Nelly dominated than I think for the men's game if Scheffler dominated just because like yeah, the way that things are, definitely. but it's, it's so, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily bad because tiger, you know, if you have someone who is the guy and they're dominating, that's good for everybody. So I don't think it's always necessarily bad. It just depends kind of on the person who's dominating. Who's, Who's close in the women's game that that uh, I don't that we're not giving enough credit to? Like, is it does she have a clear separation right now? Like, clear? You got to give me a second. I need to look at this. Each time I've no, each time I've I've looked over in the last year or two, it feels like there's been a different number one or there's been a a different top three on the leaderboard that hasn't like dramatically stood out to me as hey, this is the clear cut top two or three dogs in the game. I know Nellie's been up there for a long time. She would have been like the biggest name, but again, that might be largely so, because she's so also her one of the more marked. Over number two, her lead over number two is the same as number two's lead over number nineteen. So there's some distance there. Wow. All so right. she, you know what I'm saying? Like the average. Like I, I just was looking for a way to quantify that, and that's kind of the best proxy that I have. So yeah, she's she's put distance, and I'm I'm yeah. It'll be I'm excited to watch. Uh, you know, I'll watch every shot of the chevron basically i want like that she's she's at that level now where you kind of have to i agree with you i think that puts like that that elevates that not quite not to the degree of this this insane iowa lsu game that's going on right now but yeah. it does elevate it way higher than i would have of like i have to see how nelly does because if she goes out there and win and wins this major championship after winning three in a row you're talking about something that's insane Dude, her finishes are so. his, her finishes are kind of odd she goes 32nd 14th 16th 6th 25th, 8th, 16th, win, win, win. 
<laughs> like, where did that come you, from? What did she do? Do you, like she? Do you think she, she kind of like she checks out? Third like, do you think second. she checks out if she's not going to win? No, I think. I mean, I, it looks like there was. There's like a gap. You know, it was the beginning of. No, she played first. Th- first in 2024, she played at the Hilton Grand Vacations, and she finished 16th. And then she's won her three most recent events. So her, yeah, her four events in 2024 are a tie for 16th and three wins. Yeah, I don't know. I've got no idea. She must have done something, or or it's what a or, met, or yeah. Shout out to the QI10. Shout out to the QI10. That thing is just an absolute weapon. You got Scotty, you got Nelly, you got Rory, you got all kinds of phenomenal players rocking that thing. So shout out to the QI10. Our friends at ZipRecruiter conducted a recent survey and found that the top hiring challenge employers face for 2024 is a lack of qualified candidates. But if you're an employer and need to hire, here's good news. ZipRecruiter has smart tools and features that help you find more qualified candidates fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash foreplay. Here's how ZipRecruiter's tools and features help you find the best people for your roles. As soon as you post your job, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology shows you candidates whose skills and experience match it. You can use ZipRecruiter's invite to apply feature to send top candidates a personalized invite to encourage them to respond to your job post. When you use ZipRecruiter's rating tool to rate your candidates, they send you more matches from new profiles that are created on the site. So clearly ZipRecruiter is doing all kinds of magical stuff that no one else is to help you solve that big challenge, which is obviously finding that the top hiring uh, and, and hireable employees are just very difficult to find. It's hard to find top qualified candidates. Let ZipRecruiter help you co- uh, conquer the biggest hiring challenge, which is finding qualified candidates. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Go to this exclusive web address right now try, uh, to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash foreplay. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Let's get into uh, the men's game this last weekend. I had thrown a little bit of money finally on Scotty Scheffler plus 140. I got him at on like Saturday night, Sunday morning to win the golf tournament. Uh, He loses by one. He misses just a shocking five and a half foot putt on the 72nd hole. Yet the Jaeger bomb, baby, the Jaeger Meister. Uh, This is a guy, if anybody was listening last year when Kirk and myself were doing the gambling show, I took Jaeger all the time. I took him top 30s, top 40s. He'd be like plus 250. He'd be plus 150 to finish top 30. Nobody really knew who he was. And he just was steady Eddie. He was the guy that a lot of people thought they should have had on the European Ryder Cup team last fall. Uh, He plays in just an inspirational way. He's got this clear like flow state sort of like process to his game where he likes to be moving as he hits his shots, basically. So he's he steps right in with his driver, and he kind of waggles, wiggles, moves his feet a little, and then just pulls it back and hits it. He does the exact same thing with his putter to the point where they were showing some clips last night on uh, the the whatever it is, Golf Central after the event, of basically his feet are still wiggling like as he's pulling the putter back because he likes there to be so much like consistent flow yeah. that goes into his shots. Uh just a very fun guy to actually watch hit golf shots because of that. Uh, and you could tell how much it meant to him down the stretch. He was like, he, he, he's one of those guys who he had such a good way of looking like he was trying to look like it didn't mean the world to him, but like it meant the world to him. Whereas Toasty was the exact opposite. He's like, he can't help but just go absolutely bananas on every sh- single shot, good or bad. Whereas it felt like you could sense that Jaeger was like, I'm going to look like this. This is cool, but it's just not cool. I think this is insane. Uh, so I thought he was very fun to watch down the stretch. Yeah, Toasty. You know, we started hearing stories about Toasty last year when we were mm-hmm. on the Corn Ferry Tour. That guy's got quite the reputation in the game. Look, we, you know, we want to give people a chance to, you know, we don't want to hold everyone's past against them. I wasn't at the tournament yesterday, so I didn't, you know, see how he was. But it, he seemed to be very entertaining yesterday, at least. He was on his, his best behavior. Um he was. Yeah, he was on uh, five behavior. He, he was, was on his best, fist bumps. He, yeah, he, he was, gave like he had like a five footer on like twelve for par and just gave like Tiger when he like 
you know, won the U.S. Open in 2008. Just a huge fist bump for that. Bear. And then he made they, like the a PGA 20 tour. footer the next hole. Yeah, yeah. He made a long, he made, he was making a mess on that hole. He like duffed a chip and then he made like a 30 footer and he was like turning to the crowd and stuff. Um, <laughs> the PJ Tour was running a lot of stuff about him, like different articles about who he is and stuff. Apparently he like go, he fixes things. Did you see that? He like goes into, so if like no. they were saying that the that most mean? recent thing that he had was he found a blender in the trash and he took it apart and he fixed it and he was like super stoked about that. Wow. Okay, so that's yeah. just one of his deals. That's how he rolls. Yeah, he's yeah he's a uh, he's a he's a one of a kind character from every yeah. So uh, no, it was good. There's been a lot of it's, it was another winner though who was like way off the beaten path. The, 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 that trend. It's been Scotty and then a bunch of guys who are not household names before they win has been the story basically all year. That could change. Obviously, we still have the 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 big. It's crazy that we feel like there's been so many narratives in the golf season so far. We've talked about Scotty this and Scotty bad and Scotty good and Rory this, and like basically what happens next week can overshadow any of what we've talked about for the last three months. It feels like we put so much energy into the beginning of the year, and then it's like, oh yeah, these are the four ones that actually matter, and it starts next week. Yeah, I you know I will give the Players Championship a little bit of a. Uh a little bit of a boost and just that like Scotty winning that thing back to back and how good the finish was and how, it, how much it got everybody amped up and the Wyndham Clark lip out and Xander being right there. Like all of that, I, I think will stand the test of time. Like we'll remember for sure, that for sure, but you're right. The rest of this stuff, who's the French guy, Pavon, Pavon, that one, Pavon, Matthew yeah. Pavon, Pavon, like all that stuff. No, like it is, it's sort of this forgettable and even, even our boy Jaeger, who I'm going nuts for now, like it'll be kind of forgettable uh, at, at some level, which it's nice to have. It's great to have long shot little stories and winners and you get the family out there and you see how much it means and all that's like when Scotty missed that putt in the 72nd hole and they cut to the Jaeger bomb who just put his head in his hands basically for a second, like was like, oh my, like, you could actually see the realization of a childhood dream hit that man's heart. Like in real time, I thought that was such a cool, quick little moment. So all that stuff is awesome. I'm not, we're not trying to downplay that, but in terms of you're right, like the macro storylines of the PGA Tour, the type of stuff that our boys over at Full Swing are going to focus on, that Dan Rappaport's going to be narrating his way through over the next year. It all starts fucking next week. And speaking of next week, well, I'm not going to get to Tiger. Yeah, I want to talk about Scotty real quick. Um, boy, when that guy, when that guy gets back into a phase where he's just not quite making putts, it just feels and looks like he's not going to make putts. It just it just does. And when that shot, his his approach shot on the 72nd hole, it landed whatever 10 feet short, took a nice hop towards the pin, and then checked like five and a half feet short. I remember exactly in that moment as someone who had wagered on him thinking, that's not quite close enough for me to feel <laughs> good. And it it just wasn't. And I know he didn't think he hit a bad putt. He just said he misread it. And all that down the stretch, but literally, dude, like none of his putts outside of he had like a forty or thirty footer on like eleven or something. I actually th thought should have gone in. It looked like it was going in. Outside of that, every putt that he hit looked like it never had a chance of going in the hole. It's very interesting, kind of the role that he plays on the PGA Tour right now, because on one hand, he is he's been completely inevitable, and his stats going back to January of 2022 really but 2023 more so are just a joke he's a clear number one with a clear also like achilles heel and weakness like normally when a guy gets to that level where they are yeah. significantly better than everybody else you think of like john rom and when he was rolling you know early last year and everyone's like how do you beat that guy he's a golfing machine like you know tiger it needs no description about how much better he was than everybody else spieth was like making every single putt it's, it's it's a different energy that he has because he is a clear number one but there's an angst kind of when you're watching him of like is he going to be okay at this part of the game and i don't know that we've had a number one with that kind of dynamic at least not recently it's bizarre man it's like in order to get to that level in the game in order to get to number one you yeah. have to be perfect at everything because everybody's so good and it's like he, he sometimes and again, I mean, he just won two tournaments in a row, two huge tournaments. Like he's, he's the best. But it's also just you're like, I don't, I, I don't know how to explain the fact that I feel like he's gonna miss, and then he misses, and he's still 
even with that, should have won the golf tournament. He three-putted from like four feet or whatever that was the other day, which included a, like a one-and-a-half, two-foot tap-in that he missed. Uh, he missed that five-and-a-half-footer on the 72nd hole. He had the ball on, I think it was Saturday, on that, you know, yeah, is it 315 or 16? Like, from like a foot. Well, he had the one, too, where he landed his wedge five feet short of the hole, and it spun back into the water, and he makes double. So it's like he's still like – the guy hadn't made a double bogey in like 500 holes, and he goes out and makes a couple doubles and still had a putt to get into a playoff from five and a half feet that missed. So he is so unbelievably dominant. That tee shot on like, I guess it's, is it 16, I think? 16, that's that par five that was reachable where, you know, a couple guys hit it in the left trees, guys hit it out to the right, yeah, but they oh, can still maybe get home with like a right three wood. Out. And he just hit this blistering, missile up the left side like exactly we were trying to hit it and had like a fucking seven iron in or something to that hole i was like oh my god this is why this guy is clearly number one it was like he literally standing on the tee had a half shot half stroke advantage he was already a half a stroke head on the tee because he was able to just fucking hit his tee shot so far down there exactly where you're supposed to hit it with the right shot shape and the whole deal so he is so unbelievably dominant he should have won again this week. It felt like he couldn't make a thing to save his life on the back nine on Sunday, and yet he still barely lipped out to to miss a playoff. So he's that dominant. I can't even imagine not thinking he's going to be the the guy that's in the mix at the at the Masters tournament. Uh, I'm very excited to watch that. I'm very excited to watch Scotty kind of tear that place apart. Uh, and moving into the Masters tournament, uh, five time champion and 15 time major winner. 2019 Masters champion, who was actually the longest holding Masters champion, I believe, that I've ever heard of because from spring 2019 until the fall of 2020, he was just the reigning Masters champion. Tiger Woods uh, was at Augusta National this past weekend. Uh, rumors were out there, reports were out there that he played a nice little tune-up round with uh, Chairman Fred Ridley and his buddy Justin Thomas who he'll probably be paired up with. I think he gets paired up. I don't think he's allowed to play professional golf unless he gets paired up with Justin Thomas. So I'd be surprised if he's not in some way with him. But uh, but nice to see, you know, he was listed like whatever a week ago. Everybody started going crazy that he was listed as in the field for the Masters. Now he went up and played Augusta. You got to think this guy is pretty much just a lock to obviously be playing in and feeling good going into the event. Yeah, it's... um. We'll see. I've I I don't I have very very low expectations, which makes me sad. How ex how low my expectations are? I'll put it that way. I kind of feel that way too. To be honest with you, he's played one fucking round. He played one. So round he played one year. round and seven holes. And I and I wrote about this today. I still don't. We never got an explanation for the Players Championship, and I kind of think that we should have gotten one because why didn't he play? He said in December of last year that he was going to play once per month. Or that was going to be his goal to play once per month. Okay. So since then, you've played one round and seven holes without saying anything else. The, the players' championship was two months, or no, sorry, it was a full month after Riviera. He had more than enough time to recover from influenza. So was he overstating his health back then? Or has something happened that we don't know about and he's going to show up to the Masters and be like, yeah, I've been struggling with this, that, or the other, and for whatever reason didn't want to, like, why didn't he, play? or was it, you know, he did meet with Yasir. Is it possible that the tour determined that, like, you know, that was more important? I'm just trying to understand why he didn't play and why he didn't not. Because even in the past, I looked, I looked back when he would miss the players, he would give a statement, be like, I'm bummed to miss the players. It's our championship. He didn't say anything this time. I want to preface before we go on in this conversation that everything we're saying is out of love and admiration and fandom for Tiger Woods. I, too, am frustrated. I'm annoyed. I don't really understand it, and I'm worried, and I'm concerned because what doesn't get talked about enough is that that Friday when he played seven holes and then uh, the paramedics truck showed up and <laughs> I forgot about that. he <laughs> was shuttled off of the golf course, he was kind of limping around that round. And I know a lot of the jokes have been like he had to shit his pants and he had... Uh, sickness or food poisoning and in and out was getting roasted and then he had the influenza tweet and the whole deal he didn't look great he just did generally that that friday didn't look like he was moving properly he was moving gingerly whatever it was wasn't playing great that is a massive concern if he was just sick he had a stomach bug 
He got unhealthy. Paramedics trucks had to be there in case he was shitting his pants, diarrhea all over the Riviera clubhouse. They can't have that. That's fine. I know it's not great for Tiger in the moment. That's a bad spot to be in, but that's fine. But if it was a larger physical issue, that's what I'm concerned about. And that, that I, I can't fathom any other explanation for not playing the player's championship. That is a Florida golf course that you can walk around. It's fucking flat. I know it looks kind of crazy because of Pete Dye and the whole thing, but it's about as flat as it gets. It's a goddamn Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, baby. It's flat for like hundreds of square miles. That's just what it is around there. So it's not that. It's the it's the tournaments. It's the I'm sorry, the tours flagship event he is the guy he's the carrying the VP. tour he's the executive he's... vp of the fucking tour now <laughs> so and i was up by nine which we'd love to see but for him to have not played that not given an excuse any of that i'm completely with you and again it's out of admiration it's out of intense intense fandom that i want to see tiger woods play but i don't think we're left with anything other than to have some of the lower expectations i've ever had of tiger going into the masters because he's not playing golf. I have no idea if he's healthy. I have no idea what his game looks like. I have no idea what his mindset is because he's played such little golf. He's talked all the time. Like he's come out these last couple of years. He's come out in that first round at the masters and shot, you know, whatever, a one over 73. And he's talked about, oh, I'm rusty and all that. And it's like, well, you're rusty because you don't play. Now he said he was going to be able to play once a month. It's going to be it's April now, which means he would have played three times at this point. He's played basically zero, and that's just incredibly frustrating. So I'm with you. My my expectations, as hard as it is to admit, are very low. I'm still going to bet on him a hundred million to one or whatever he's at on DraftKings Sportsbook. I still think he's going to win the event, but my 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 expectations are lower than usual. So with Tiger and Scotty, it got me thinking. So Scotty is plus five hundred. Uh, to win the Masters right now, hashtag DK Partner, DraftKings Sportsbook, around plus 500. How many wow. times do you think that Tiger Woods had those odds or lower to win the Masters? So he was plus, you know, 495 or better. How, just how many years? Just give, me, just give me a ballpark estimate. Well, let me go through the years. I'm going to guess 97, no, 98. Even after coming off winning by 12, I don't think he was having a great start to the year. Five to one is insane odds in a golf tournament. So I'm going to say no. 1999, I'm going to say no. 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. That would be eight. And I'm going to throw one more in there. I'm going to say nine times he was at those odds or better. You, you were close. It's 12. Fuck. 2004 wow. 2004 he was plus 350 so i guess he was still like you know having a because i know that was the year he didn't win but it was still early in the year um okay. 2007 2007 according to action uh, according to it sorry cut that in 2000 i'll just say what it was in 2007 he was minus 125 that's the shortest that i could have ever that's the shortest <laughs> one ever so it was yeah oh, he was man. better odds than not to win that's crazy and then 2012 when he was coming back and winning in 2013 he was plus 450 and plus 350 but you got to think a lot of that was just like sucker bets but i guess that wasn't his prime mm -hmm. too it was like everyone wanted to take tiger so they would kind of fleece you on tiger yeah holy cow 12 times he was at those yeah, 12 times. better that yeah. is absolutely outrageous yeah outrageous. that just shows like what so, he what it was what he was the who he was for 12 years he was the dude was darth vader it was him every single year. So the crazy part is in 01, 02, and 05, those people took those odds and they were right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like in 2019, delivered. he was 12 to 1. So he was actually, he was like a top probably 10 favorite that year, but he wasn't the favorite. Yeah. And that year, 2019, he had gone, he had almost won the British Open where he had the lead, solo lead in the back nine and choked it away, bogey double. And then he at the Belle Reve at the PGA to Brooks Kepka, he finished, I think, tied for second or solo second. So, and then he had won the tour championship. So, going into that, I know there's golf that happens in between that, but there were some pretty good reasons for him to be like a top five or six favorite for that tournament. Well, that, and that's the difference between that's why I'm so like sad about this comeback is it's he's just 
his body's not giving him a chance to win tournaments. Like he he played 18 times in 2018. He played 18 times. He's played one round. Oh this my time. god! You know, I think he's, he's finished. He's finished 72 holes. I believe it's three times since the accident. He played 18 times in 2018. He he played 18 <laughs> times. So he played he played Valspar. He played Tory. He played yeah. you know he played everywhere that year. He played the match play. He played all the majors. He played, yeah. He played all the. Then he played all the, uh, all the playoff events. All the playoffs. He played in the Ryder Cup. No problem. He, he won the last everywhere. one. Yeah. Right. Right. That ain't the same shit right now. God damn it. The hottest drops in golf. Gear that sells out in minutes. We're talking head covers, putters, accessories, apparel. These designs are incredible. The equality is amazing. And there is something for everyone made in the USA. We're talking about swag golf. Their upcoming drop is dedicated to all things Augusta. Some sick head covers, apparel bags, and more. All celebrating the spirit of Augusta with their own swag flair. If you love Augusta, this drop is for you. It's happening on April 9th and April 10th at 12 p.m. Central Time. Swag Golf, look, they got head covers that have thousands and thousands of threads in them that are just sick. They're really sick. It's like a, they're like a piece of art. It's like I have one of my three wood and my putter right now. I've got the tailor-made kith one on my driver, which it's going to take a lot to move to move, knock that out. But I've got these swag ones on the three wood and the putter. They don't look like normal head covers. They're like thick and they have this crazy structural integrity. So like, yeah, they, you know, you're you pay a premium, but the product is unbelievable. Like everyone looks at it. It just it, it looks like a totally different class of product. And they sell out so fast with their drops. So make sure that you're ready to go again. Happening April 9th. And April 10th at 12 p.m. Central Time. Visit swaggolf.com to check out what's coming out with that drop. Pick up your Swag Golf Augusta gear. Follow at Swag Golf Co. on Instagram and all other socials to be in the loop on the latest drops. And visit swaggolf.com. Reminder of Masters Week, by the way, we're going to have a live show on Monday night at Club Magnolia. That stuff sold out, so you can't get it anymore, but we're going to put out uh, footage from that, which will be fun. And then we've got a mini golf tournament at the Barstool Chicago office. I've never been to the Chicago office. I don't know that Frankie or Trent have been either. Dan's going to remain as our on-site correspondent for the Masters tournament. He's credentialed under Barstool Sports for the Masters Tournament, which is insanely cool, insanely cool for all of us, obviously, especially for you. But the three of us, myself, Frankie, and Trent, will be in the Barstool Mini Golf Tournament. If people remember last year in Arizona, uh, it came down to the wire for the beginning of the final round. I actually um, got within one, I believe, of Kirk, and we had a little bit of a back nine kind of battle and then i fell off people were screaming at each other there's an all there's an all-time iconic picture of me kirk ryan whitney and dave just screaming at each other on like the 12th hole of the mini golf tournament last year uh we're doing another rendition of the barstool mini golf tournament but it will be during masters week so i believe that we're gonna have a uh, live footage of the first couple of rounds on wednesday that will be going on throughout the day from the Barstool Chicago office. And then on Thursday, as soon as Masters coverage concludes for the day, there's going to be a cut and there's going to be a final round of the Barstool Mini Golf Tournament. So that's what kind of our schedule is next week. Uh, insanely excited for that. Insanely excited for the Masters. I can't even like fathom that it's here already. It's the most, it's the coolest thing that we have in our sport. Uh, even better than the Ryder Cup, I would say. It just encompasses everything that we love. I cannot wait to see that place. Uh, I got to say, I ran into our dear friend, Mr. Max Homa, at Chipotle uh, two days okay. ago, and uh, I, I, he was on the phone, and I grabbed my burrito. I always get a chicken burrito with white rice, no beans. I get no cheese. I get no sour cream. I get corn, medium salsa, and guac because it's good for your heart. So I try to get a relatively healthy burrito if there's such a thing. 
and I grab my burrito and I get one of these organic lemonades that they've got there, which are absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I make sure I get a lid and a straw because otherwise I'll chew the ice and they got really big ice cubes there that are bad for your teeth. So anyways, I grab both those things and I'm about to walk out. I see Max home over there. I wave at him. He says, give me a second, hops off the phone. And then he and I sat at Chipotle for about a half hour and we just caught up for a little bit. And he kind of started going like hole by hole at Augusta National, just going through the holes and the strategy, and what surprises you most when you're there. And I was just kind of feeding him, you know, I was like, yeah, I did that, you know, just trying to get it from him. Who's, you know, a top 10 player in the world. He's about to go to the masters next, next week and play. And it got me so hyped up just hearing him like talk about the holes, talk about the strategy. He was talking about the huge mound that's in the middle of the sixth green, that part three, and how hard it is to hit it on that back right shelf. He was talking about how difficult the approach is to the par five 15th if you're going for it and how it's a lot tougher now to actually go for it because they've moved the tees back. And he was telling me how dynamic it is that Augusta, like they moved the tees back on 15, but what a lot of people don't realize is they also moved the tee down. He's like physically down. He's like, so they didn't have that much room to work with to go backwards. So they were able to actually kind of create five or 10 more yards or whatever it is by, by moving the tee box, like literally downwards, like into the ground, uh, that makes it that much harder for tee shot. So just going through that stuff got me so juiced up for the masters. Uh, I can't fucking wait for next week. I'm all fired up for it. Yeah. It's, uh, I, you know, I'm, it's my sixth one, my sixth uh, time being credentialed there, six in a row. Mm. And, uh, I, so I've, I was thinking like, I've spent, spent like a good, you know, month in that media center of my life. So I, you know, I, by the end, hopefully I'll, a few, a one year of my life, if I do 50 masters will have been sent, spent in that media center. And I'll be one of those like old croaky guys who's in there who like can't move oh, yeah. and is still asking questions. And they're like, what is this guy? Why is he talking? And there's some young kid on the new platform who I hate. Yeah, that'll happen. I mean, we are. I already am one of those guys. Like it's already. Uh, there's, you know, I look up and there's TikTok and there's fucking. We got the good, good boys who we ended up being great friends with, who are awesome. They're out there and they're joggers. They're like 23 years old, playing fucking spin the wheel on the gun. I'm just like, ah, like, what is going on in this in this world? So <laughs> we kind of already became those guys overnight. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but um, here we are. Speaking of your, speaking of your credential over the last six years. The last couple have been with Barstool Sports. There are a couple with Golf Digest. I noticed the Golf Digest Open went, unfortunately, from eight events oh in their God, inaugural you're year. you're nasty. You're nasty. To four events, which I don't think you see. A lot of times you see an expansion <laughs> in something like that. You don't see what I guess I would call is a compression, maybe, of um, the situation. So hopefully everything's going well there. But I noticed there are only four events this year. So if you're... Russian, there's only half the spot. So I would say hurry on over there and sign up for the Golf Digest Open. Uh, they, they got plenty of spots open, I noticed, on their website. Um, Piners number 10. So Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, uh, the 10th golf course at Pinehurst Resorts is opening. Um, they unveiled their new logo last week, the Sand Mines. There's all kinds of crazy history behind it, which is sweet. Um, but they used to mine for sand. They've got like railroad tracks and old railroad cars that went through there. And they kind of made this unbelievably cool logo uh, of Piner Sand Mines and then Piner's number 10. Piner's number 10 is an original Tom Doak golf course. Uh, they've been working on it for a long time. But the Tom Doak part of it is I, I actually want to get Mr. Tom Pashley back on the show here soon and go through it after the Masters and all that hoopla kind of finishes up because we can talk about the U.S. Open leading up to it. U.S. Open's at Pinehurst this year in June, the whole deal. But, you know, they were kind of entertaining different architects, those that are kind of into the golf resort scene, the Bandons and the Stream Songs and the Sand Valleys and the Pinehursts and all that, Cabot, all that stuff now. You kind of hear a lot of the names. You hear Cor Crenshaw, you hear Tom Doak, you hear Gil Hance, like, you hear, you know, David McClay kid, we've had like, these are kind of the names that you hear when it comes to this. Well, Tom Doak is, you know, up there. He is um, a little bit more controversial than the others and that he's quite outspoken about uh, the work of his peers and <laughs> judges the work of his peers, but he cannot deny that his golf courses are absolutely spectacular. Pacific Dunes is insane. Old McDonald out there is insane. 
just every Tom Doak golf course that I've played is so special. And for him to get his fingers on Pinehurst and this sort of new terrain that they've got to work with, I was fortunate enough to play it back in October. Obviously, that was whatever, six, four, five months before the course opened. So the greens weren't necessarily rolling yet or, or and all that. But I walked away from it thinking, for anybody that's been to Pinehurst, I think that when you survey groups in the next couple of years, once this course is open and it matures and the whole deal, I think this golf course is going to be most people's favorite golf course. Well, now it opens tomorrow when this podcast comes out. Uh, and I'm extremely excited to see the reviews because it is absolutely phenomenal. It's a phenomenal golf course. Piners is really, really becoming kind of the place in American golf. What's the status of the, um, aren't they building that like a, like a clubhouse type of thing or something over at the sand mines? You mean? No, they're building like a, isn't the USGA building a building oh, at, yeah. in Pinehurst? So the USGA is essentially moving. They're doing, um, I believe like, um, is it a testing or a research and development type facility and a headquarters? So it'll be, you know, I think, I don't know what you want to call it. Half their headquarters is in Far Hills, New Jersey still. And then half their headquarters is kind of in Piners. But a bunch of the USGA folks have in the last six months or so moved down to Pinehurst. I notice when I go to the roast office in the morning, I see quite a few folks in there with little USGA swagger on. And that building, Dan, that is where the caddies used to park on the right. So when you pull into Piners, they've got kind of their own little Magnolia Lane type feel when you drive through the trees yeah. and there's a couple different circles that you go through. Right on the right side when you pull in there now, you wouldn't believe it. It looks like it's been there forever. Is Are these two sick, incredibly like aesthetically and architecturally well done USGA buildings with almost a tiny little semicircle that you pull in that has like USGA and USA flagpoles right there. And it looks really, really good. And they're pretty much done. They've got laptops up in the in the windows. You can see it. So that building, that's like the new USGA kind of headquarters. And there, I guess it's like a testing facility, I think. Uh, that's pretty much ready to go. I don't think it was fully open. It looked like it was like partially open last time I was there, but it's been three weeks or so. That puppy's like ready to go now. It looks totally different. Yeah, the USGA people, they, they do have a nice merchandise. I feel like they're always, they're always in the dark blues. Like they, they, they travel and they show strength with the way that they dress. Um, no, the Doke thing, have you, li have you listened to the, uh, he did a podcast, I think it was with the Fried Egg, where he's talking about the different, because he did Stream Song Blue, where you guys just were, um, and Court Crenshaw did Red. And he's like talking about how the difference in the land, and he's like, he's basically saying like, you know, they got the better piece of land, so I had to do this, that, again. Like he's definitely he'll give you a little bit of an edge that you don't get with <laughs> with the other guys. But no, I mean you're you're uh, what are you going to do with your place during the U.S. Open? Have you have you made a final decision? Yeah, my final decision. So uh, I invited my parents, I invited my brother and his family, I invited a couple of my best friends from back home and their families, uh, and I'm just going to have the coolest week of all time at my house. Uh, I thought forever about renting it out. I'm sure part of me will still regret not renting it out. I know how much my next door neighbor rented his place out for, and it's a hilarious amount of money. Uh, <laughs> but I also just was kind of thinking like, this is what I love to do more than anything on earth. How insane is it that there's going to be a U.S. Open like in your backyard? Um, and obviously renting the place out, I'm able to kind of subsidize owning the whole place pretty goddamn well. And so at the end of the day, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to invite people down. So I've been really toying with the idea of having a huge party on Friday night. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I'm going to do. Like I might get it catered. You think the USGA is going to be, you think the USGA is you think you're like, you can just throw, I know it's your house, but like you just throw down on the third tee on Friday night of the US Open. Look, they build an eight foot wall that's between my porch right, your property and is your property and it's only i mean if they move the t if they do the forward t on the third hole for the u.s open which i believe they will do they did it one or two days in 2014 which makes the third hole go from like 360 to like right around 300 now that t box is legitimately like 22 feet from the edge of my patio in in my house and they have an eight foot wall there that's a chain link wall that then they put, I believe, like green or blue tarp on 
that separates us from the golf course. So if you want to separate us from the golf course, private property, I'm going to be the first to invite a bunch of USGA folks. We're going to be in good synergy and harmony here. We're all working on this thing together. But my current plan is to have a mega party on Friday night at the uh, at the US Open. That's kind of my plan. Are you going to have stands so that you could like sit? Like, can you see the the golf even with that fence or no? Um uh we will have scaffolding and on top of that scaffolding will be bleachers so that you can see the golf course yeah. so if people yeah. remember like yeah, and- when the u.s open was at wingfoot in 2020 during covid and it's in wingfoot is in a neighborhood in mamarnik new york and there are a bunch of those homes around there had people that had built it's not a lot i'll i think it's going to be like two rows of bleachers that could seat like eight people each maximum but it will be bleachers that will perch up and then you'll be able to see the sixth green perfectly, the second green perfectly, the third green perfectly, the entire fairway and tee shot on three, and you'll even be able to see the tee shots on the seventh hole. So it'll be a phenomenal, phenomenal viewing experience. Right and what now. you also get is that is that it's not like you have seats by a race where it's like three hours and it's over. Like you, get, you get really six days to bask in the glory of that week. Like you got you're going to you're going to have 3 days of like an unbelievable experience before the tournament even starts. My biggest goal is to get some pictures of Tiger Woods with the home in the background. I want Tiger Woods out there hitting shots and there's us on our bleachers like above him. Dude, imagine he comes up what's up Rigsy? Imagine. Imagine you're just like <laughs> on the patio watching him doing a that's a chance that's the legitimate chance for it to happen. It's the only chance Maybe. for it to happen. Maybe during a practice round, something like that could happen. Yeah, oh, Rick, all round. lubed up. Like Tuesday, he's in good mood, and he's just like, oh, what's up, Rick? He comes into your backyard, <laughs> and you're like, hey, you want to pop? He's like, nah, I got to keep playing. That would be all time. That would make the whole thing worth it. That would make not renting it out and cashing in on that gold mine completely worth it for that moment. So I, I am going to need some photos of Tiger and Rory and all that with the house in the background, and then I'll get all those framed and just put those in the in the home forever. So it's also, I'm going to be... You know, I'm using it as an opportunity to kind of to get some cool memorabilia and and artifacts throughout the entire week that I could put in the home forever. But yeah, plan now is to go. I already booked a couple tea times for Saturday and Sunday morning for me and my friends at some nearby courses. So we're just going to have the coolest week of all time. I love Piners, probably my favorite place on planet Earth. And so for there to be a U.S. Open there, I was like, I can't. And I was thinking too, man, I was like, so I'm going to rent out my house and then like, on on monday night through through sunday night i'm gonna like like tuck my tail between you my can. legs and drive 20 you minutes can. away to yeah. some fucking so it's motel a cuck that i'm like cuck, uh, expensing it's a, it's a for barstool I'm not that. fucking yeah. no chance am i doing that so i'm just gonna stay at the house like i said my parents are coming in a bunch of my my brother's coming in um with his wife and his kids and a bunch of my friends are coming in so we're just gonna have i've got i've already got eight beds in there i i, I think i'm shipping in two air mattresses that i have in arizona and i'm gonna buy like three or four more and just set them up because i know i'm gonna just run into people i'm gonna be having a couple pops it might be a bar booty figure or somebody like that i mean <laughs> let's just crash at the house tonight so there's gonna be a lot of that going on so i'm insanely excited for the u.s open insanely excited for the US you also open. get it you get it every, like every six years or something what is it when's the next one after that they're they coming right back like in 2029 20, baby they're coming right back in 2029 in 2029 it's still in the 20s yeah yeah it's still in the 20s That's it's like 20 it's 2024 2029, 2035, 2042, and 2049, I believe, are the are the next yeah, US they're, Open. They're so, just, yeah, you get, yes, Jesus. They're not not coming to Piner. So there'll be another chance for me to do whatever, I, you know, hopefully, in theory. Are you looking for a great Mother's and or Father's Day gift idea? I was, and I found it at Paint Your Life. With Paint Your Life, you'll have a hand-painted portrait created to fit almost any budget and is a great gift idea for your mother, your father, or both. Paint Your Life transforms your photos into one-of-a-kind, beautiful, hand-painted portraits by professional artists. This is legitimately, Dan, one of the coolest gift ideas that I can think of. Do you? Do they do dogs? Uh, that, I'm we're not sure that they'll that, do dogs. Way. They'll do I dogs, right? Sure they'll definitely they'll do, do dogs. dogs. So we've got a portrait that is is not my favorite of, but it's like a picture. It's like I think I'm going to get one of my dog. 
because I think he deserves wow. to have a hand painted, you know, right where he eats to show that this is this is his reign. He's the greenskeeper of Rappaport Golf Club, and he is the king deserves of my it. property, and he deserves some fucking, you know, he deserves a uh, a portrait. Get yourself, get your father, your mother, anybody really, but especially your father and mother on Father's and Mother's Day. They deserve it. A professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo, any photo, at a truly affordable price. Upload photos to create anything you imagine. Put yourself in a location you've always wanted to go uh, to or add a lost loved one to a special occasion to create the portrait of your dreams. Lots of options. You got to put me at the Dad Bod Classic. We'll put you in the Dad Bod Classic, Dan. We'll put you in the Dad Bod Classic. I Give me that portrait, baby. On any budget, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. <laughs> And I'm going to use our friends at Paint Your Life, and I'm going to get Dan added to the Dad Bod Classic. Uh, there's go. lots of art mediums, Finally. oil, watercolor, charcoal, more, and a great selection of quality frames. Paint Your Life is the gift that will warm your mother's and father's heart. You may even catch them wiping away a tear or two, which I have nothing but respect for. You can give the most meaningful gift you have ever given at paintyourlife.com. There's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. Get 20% off your painting. That's right. 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word foreplay to 87204. That's foreplay, F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. One word to 87204. Text foreplay to 8. 7204 paint your life celebrate the moments that matter most message and data rates may apply see terms for details I'm trying to think if there's anything else that i have um uh stream song videos uh bushman i know we kind of teased people with this last week we talked about this incredibly quick turnaround that we're going to have i do feel a little bit bad for you guys because the first video that we filmed is probably going to be the most difficult to edit by far because we did a million reverse mulligans and the whole deal. What's the status on the stream song videos, Bush? Do you know? Yeah, re reverse mulligans is uh, going to be coming out on Thursday. Wow. Wow, was that yep. bad. What They've been uh, grinding hard on that this week, yeah. Wow, that's insanely good news. I cannot wait for people to see that video. It's going to be insane. <laughs> um, oh, that's quick. Awesome. All right, cool. Stream song, so that's going to be coming out. I'm glad you mentioned Stream Song, Dan, because that Stream Song Blue course, I didn't remember it being as good as it is. And that was my favorite course there. And I was blown away at how sweet of a golf course that was. Tom Dope. Is Blue is Blue the one that finishes with the par five or the one that finishes with a they're both par fives. So one of them is straight and one goes up and left. The one no, the the blue is it feels like a par five. It's a dead straight long par four with cross bunkers. And then the approach shot, you're like looking at the clubhouse with bunkers in front of the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's, yeah, that one's amazing. I mean, they're all, the thing about that place is they're all pretty True, close. they're all amazing. You know, as yeah. far, it's like, it's, how was the chain? Chain was really cool. Um, chain was really cool. I was, you know, there's like the cradle and the hay and these are a lot of, it's pretty much flip wedge and putt. The chain was not that. There were a few holes that were like wedges, but it was like you had to hit some shots. Like you had, there were so uh, many times you had to step up with like a five iron in your hands and hit an absolute fucking dart pure through the wind, or you were like out of the hole. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't kind of a fuck around little thing, but dude, it was amazing. It's walking distance from the lodge, like a two minute walk. You walk across this cool bridge and you're there. It's got this cool little hut right there. Um, and then they got like this big bucket that is reminiscent of the chain. And they've got all these chain links. So it's doing all the little things, right, that like kind of make it stand out and tell a story about it. They got like these this little food area. They had a, a beverage cart there. I'm sure they're going to turn that hut. That was kind of their little mini pro shop. I, I think they're turning that into like something that'll be all encompassing of everything. We were saying in this giant bucket that they had, they should turn that into like the bar that you walk by, which I yeah, think they're would probably going to do something cool like that. So it's one of those, right? It's just got all of the stuff. And it was like, it would be, it would be so perfect to go play stream song blue or red or black in the morning. You have a nice beer and a lunch. You go back, you even maybe shower up real quick. And then you go over there with like five clubs or something 
And I mean, again, you're going to need a four iron or something, but God, you could just rip around. You could play it like a six hole loop, a 12 hole loop, or like a 19 hole loop, I believe, and just go rip around that thing. You don't have to get in a shuttle. You don't have to go anywhere. It's like, and they've got like the biggest putting green, I think, in the world. So, boy, that place, uh, you know, I always measure things by like, I got my St. Louis boys trip. We call it the struggle. And we've been to four different places now. We're going to, we're going to band in this, this summer. And it's like, I look at a place like, is that like, because I want to take these guys to like the coolest imaginable golf experiences that you can have. They're all golf nuts. Like they don't get to do this stuff that often. They get to watch, they have to watch us do it all the fucking time. And I walked away from stream song being like, we're coming here at some point in the next few years. Like this place is so awesome. It's made for that. So far we went to Cabot, which is like the Nova Scotia Cabot. We went to Aaron Hills and did a day up at Whistling Straits. We went to Pinehurst, and then we went to Big Cedar Lodge. And I'm like, this year we're doing Bandon. I think two years we're doing Arcadia Bluffs, which I absolutely loved in Michigan. And I was kind of thinking like in three years, I might move it from the summer to the winter for one year, and we go to Stream Song because Stream Song blew me away how cool the golf was, how cool the entire scene was. I've been there three times on boys trips just like oh, that. I didn't and know that. yeah, it's yeah, no, it's um it's one of those places where you feel like you're at a, you're at camp basically. I mean, there's nothing yeah. around. You're not you're not leaving, you know, it's like <laughs> you, you might as well buy in. And and the golf is incredible. Dude. I I remember one afternoon we we hung out at the, the black clubhouse is like all glass, right? It's like a there's this yep. room that's like all so yeah. cool. And so we were we were hanging out there and we just putted all afternoon and because the because the uh, room was glass, because the walls were glass, we were able to see the bartender, and we developed hand signs with him where we would just go like this, and he would come out with a whole new round <laughs> to the putting green. And uh, my friend, who will not be named, puked uh-huh. on the back patio. Uh, like wow. thirty minutes yeah. later, <laughs> he just pu- yeah. he just pulled back his thing and puked on the ground. And they they asked us very politely. They were like, "We don't want to have to do this, but like you have to leave." Like he and we were like a hundred percent, and no 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 problem at all. So we put him away, and then we came back. Yeah, it's an epic place, and it's super easy to get to. Orlando and Tampa, it's pretty much right in the middle. So, right, you get you can fly to either place. So, I've been there a bunch. Yeah. Great, great, great place. Yeah. Great memories there. It's a fantastic spot. Fantastic spot. Uh, Iowa currently up by eight right now. Uh, it's always funny when we do this because we're in real time telling people the score of a game that's been over for <laughs> twelve hours or so for however long most people are, are listening to this show. So. Uh, I'm fired up. I've, you know, I put a, a a healthy but reasonable, responsible amount of money on this, so I'm really rooting for Iowa to win by more than one and a half basketball points. That would be fantastic. Um, all right, let's do a quick from the gallery. Uh, I got a couple of good ones that I lined up from folks here. Reminder from the gallery is brought to you by our great friends at Fireball Whiskey. If there's one guy in the world I know who loves that iconic cinnamon flavor of Fireball Whiskey. It's Dan Rappaport. If there's a second guy, it's Riggs Barstool. Fireball is absolutely delicious, delicious, delicious. Uh, the 50 milliliter shooters, they're just perfect. They're perfect. They're perfect. I saw a bunch of guys today at the Barstool Classic had snagged a few of those. They put them in their bag. They're ripping them back and having a great time. It ups the ante on the golf course. You don't need a chaser. You don't need glassware. You don't have to worry about making a mess. You just rip that cap off. You take it down. You throw it in the trash, and you're ready to roll. You're ready to have yourself a great time. So, Throw a bunch of those 50 milliliter shooters in your golf bag and get ready for having a great time. Jason, Jason says, I know you guys talked recently about the winner of the Masters having to pay for the champion's dinner. Would an amateur winning the Masters still have to pay <laughs> for the champion's dinner the following year? That's, I think, I think, yes. I think, I think that's even more Augusta for the wealthy amateur to pay for all these lowly golf professionals. You know, he, is the creed of the amateur it is the creed of the amateur and i think you're right i think that the the masters tournament would change nothing it would change nothing whatsoever they would be like absolutely and boy i you know it would be i i know we had rachel heck recently announced that she's going to remain an amateur i don't know that we're going to see that in the men's game or that we have really seen that that in the men's game outside of like Stu hagestad but if he won the Masters tournament, like if anyone wins the Masters, if as an Stu amateur, wins the Masters, let me tell you something: they're giving him the bill, <laughs> and he'll be fine with the bill. And that's a compliment yes. to the Stews and Stews family and all of their great success. They earn it. I have nothing with. I think it's a capitalist society good for them. He's playing again. They this would week. absolutely. He's playing. He's playing this year. 
He's uh he won Is his he? third mid am. He's yeah. playing again in the Masters. Yeah. He also just won the Azalea it. Invitational last week. Beat like a bunch of college. You know, he's <laughs> he's number 10 amateur in the world, so it's pretty <laughs> impressive. I fucking love that about Stu. But my point is, if anybody other than Stu wins the Masters in amateur, <laughs> by the time that by the time the Champions Dinner rolls around, they're not going to be an amateur anymore, right? If no, definitely not. You turn pro the next day, and also you'll already have nil money if you're that good. But it would be. I actually kind of want to see Stu win the Masters and see what he does. Oh, just for that oh, reason. <laughs> I love Stu. I love Stu Hagestad. I think he's the fucking best. He's such a like. He's turned into such a villain in like this tight echo chamber golf community because he's just an amateur who dominates as an amateur golfer who's like what is he 35 how old is he yeah i think he's like i think he's like 32 33 maybe um (laughs) yeah he uh (laughs) listen it's a life that many people would 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 gladly take right so that's really the crux of it it's what he wanted to say no he is 32 he'll be 33 by the time the masters tournament rolls around and you're right i mean he is my favorite is when they used to try to paint it like he basically barely made his tea time at the Masters because he was sitting at his finance desk just grinding over spreadsheets. And you're like, well, I mean, he's, he's at Deepdale, like on the, you know, practicing his fucking dick off, getting ready for the Masters tournament, playing in the goddamn Azalea Open, which the fact that there's something called that, that's a real name of an event. That's not the Masters. Yeah, Azalea, Azalea Invitational. Can you believe that, that that's, they got away with that? That legitimately sounds like an event we would do on Wednesday of the Masters tournament, like <laughs> a block away from the Masters, and we, we'd be like, yeah, yeah, we're doing the Azalea event this week. <laughs> no, dude, the Azalea Invitational. I'm looking at the live scoring right now. Pretty, pretty. I'm pretty starting special. to understand the the Caitlin Clark stuff because boy, she's sick. Uh, she's absolutely sick. Wow. Country Club of Charleston. It was at. Oh, I heard that place is awesome. I've never really yeah, I've never been, been to Charleston. There. I've never really been. I've to only been there. I've not. Yeah, me either. Actually, that's not true. I was there for one day. I played with Wilcox at the Muni, nine holes, and then I've been. I left right after, and then I've been. But just like I've driven to Kiowa from there a few times, but never spent any time in Charleston. Me and a bunch of my college buddies one time went to this wild dunes place that was not far from Charleston, but we were kind of at this resort the whole time, and then we did one night of the whole weekend where we went into Charleston, but we like went to dinner and then like went to one other bar and then just like left and went home. So yeah, technically I've been there, but I haven't like been there where you walk around, you get coffee, you kind of go to a couple different restaurants over a couple different nights and like immerse yourself in the city and people rave about Charleston. So I would like to spend a little bit more time in Charleston. Um, Something tells me that your, your schedule, you'll find some time to go to Charleston at some point, probably with Savannah's with some another group of guys, probably with some group of guys that you've been doing this trip with for 10 years. You know what I mean? I feel like you have 12 of those guys. 12 I do. Like I got that. quite a few of those trips. That's like the goal is to build as many of those trips as possible. I've done a good job of that. You're doing um, a very good job. Another similar town, I feel like, is Savannah. I want to get to Savannah. I've never really been to Savannah. I drove through it on my way to Jacksonville a couple weeks ago. Alistair's there right now. Uh, the Corn Fair Tour is back in in stride this week, and they're playing down in Savannah. That's another one that's on my list. I would love to get to Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, that's like uh, I've never been to Hilton Head. I've never been to Savannah. I'm not, I, that's that's a part of the country that I still have left to explore. Troy says, how many pairs of dirty socks are in the trunk of your car during peak golf season? I'm a huge zero flop. What the fuck? I'm a huge I'm a huge flip flop post round guy. And the socks can really accumulate. I can't be the only one. <laughs> so you're just a slob. That you're like, what? You have dirty socks in your car? I don't think I have any dirty socks in my car, but I've had stretches where I have before because of exactly what he's saying. If you play golf and you're it's a little bit different um depending on on your status. Like if you're playing golf and you're at like a country club and you just go into your locker and change your shoes, you're not going to have any dirty socks in your car. But if you're a public course kind of guy and you go, oh, you're you making golf, this, you're making this into a public versus private no, because, type of situation. No, but what I'm saying is Dan is what I'm you yeah, kind of, because what I'm saying is if you go <laughs> play a Muni and then your feet are disgusting and you're, you got to get rid of them. You go to your car, you throw your clubs in the car so they don't get stolen. You take off your shoes and your socks and you just throw them in the back of your trunk and then you throw a pair of flip-flops or like slippers or whatever the hell you're wearing on and you go back into the clubhouse and have like a beer or two. 
I think they can accumulate. So I'm, I don't have any of this going well, do on you, currently. Do you take them out when you get home. Like I, I feel that like you just brushed be, over the the really clear part of the story. They just the story ends when the truck closes. That would probably be the best way to do it. But dude, then you get home, you're tired, you're leaving your clubs in there because you're gonna play the next day with your buddies, and then it's just next thing you know, it's three weeks later, and you've got like six pair of just gross used yeah. socks oh yeah oh, i think everyone can relate before. i think everyone can relate yeah everyone can relate i've been there before man you've never been there before that's kind of messed up no no I've, I've never been there before are you gonna do any miami stuff this week no no i yeah. wait when like when you travel as much as I, I go to a lot of places for like a day or two if you open up that can of worms it's just a can of worms so like yep. Vegas, I was in Vegas and it was like, should I stay for Friday night? Like I could easily, cause we, <laughs> we filmed with Minwoo, we film with, film with Minwoo 4 PM tea time on a Friday. So we get done. It's like six 30. I've had a couple fireball shots from the shoot and it's like, I got to get the fuck home. <laughs> it's a moment where it's like, you either go to Vegas and you, you made the whole, the whole night or you're like, I got to run the other direction and get home to my young family that I don't have yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you won't have if you don't get home from Vegas very soon. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. We've got an interesting, so we got Barstool Classic event Thursday and Friday in Austin, Texas. And so tomorrow morning fly into Austin and then like Tuesday night, all day, Wednesday, and Wednesday night, just in Austin with no real plan. And so kind of once we wrap up that podcast recording Wednesday morning, it might be time to kind of get after it in Austin, maybe Wednesday night or something. Yeah, well, you got to you got you need Austin CC to come through and then you, you have some structure in your day. God, a little Austin CC pops up. I could Uber out there, have a couple cocktails, figure out whatever the local one is. That would just be a delightful. Have a nice game. I hit the ball well last weekend back home so i'm excited to get out there right now sometimes i'm afraid of golf right now like after the last two days of ball striking i'm pretty fired up to get out there and play a little bit of golf yeah i mean there's no you know you you really know what it's like to miss golf i think that's everyone knows that's your brand you know you take take these long breaks and you just miss the game so much it is monday night and i haven't hit a ball since saturday afternoon and i'm like and you're freaking out to just yeah, see like probably, what i got your, your body your skin is probably shaking because it's been i was the longest it's been in four today. years i was watching people hit i was like god i gotta hit a golf ball right now it's like jonesing out there uh all right it looks like i was gonna win this game looks like i was gonna win this game i thought we were gonna be done by the fourth quarter but it looks like we've we've pretty much been doing this the whole game can't believe we've been going as long as we have. I've been going for like an hour and a half. Wait, let's pull. Let's pull the plug. All right, we can pull the plug on this thing. Um, we're also going to bring back. By the way, in the next week, we're going to bring back the Masters College Show. So those that have been listening to this show for a while know that a couple of our most iconic shows in history were when we took stories that people have from going to the Masters tournament, and then we ended up doing it. We ended up doing a caddy episode. And this whole thing started, Dan, from uh, when Matt Kuchar didn't tip his caddy more than like a couple mm, grand. El Toucan. When he won, El Toucan. El Toucan. When he won down in Mexico, we decided to do a show where we let all caddies call in and tell amazing stories about being caddies because we wanted to be the platform for the voice of caddies out there all over the place. Well, then the show went off so amazingly. That was where we ended up. One guy told a story. He was like a caddy at. Uh, he was a caddy at Muirfield in Ohio, and he told this horrific story about like deer impaling themselves on like the fences <laughs> that they build to oh keep gosh. people out of Muirfield during the event. And like it was a wild show, but we ended up doing the show uh, like a uh, leading up to the Masters, where we had people call in and tell stories about going to the Masters. And boy, oh boy. Did it lead to some phenomenal shows? We did like three and a half, four hour long shows where people would call in and just go on and on about these insane things that happened to them at Augusta. So we're going to do that again uh, in the next week, geared up for the Masters. My one of my favorite shows that we do. We haven't done it in a couple of years. So we're going to fire that boy, bad boy, back up. Make sure you go to store.barstoolsports.com, check out a bunch of our new gear, and then get ready Thursday. The stream song series drops on YouTube. Other than that, that's all I got. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thank you to our sponsors, Game Time, DraftKings, ZipRecruiter, Swag Golf, Fireball, and Paint Your Life. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.